Have you guys had the GR stumble? I have it and I hate it. So today we're gonna fix it. I'll be driving down the freeway and all of a sudden you just kind of add a constant throttle. You let off or give it a little gas and it will just like hesitate and won't go anywhere. So today we're fixing that with the Cobb GR stumble fix. So first thing we got to do is we got to empty out the fuel lines full of fuel and make sure that there's no fuel in them because then it's going to be problems. Right now it's pressurized so what you can do is you pull the fuse out for the fuel pump, turn the car over, it'll run for a minute, not a minute, it'll run for a second or two and then it will just cut off. That will get a lot of the fuel out of the system. So we'll do that and then we'll start taking off these hoses. So here's the culprit. This little wire, wire, this little tube that goes from here to here is what I've, I've read is what the problem actually is. So we gotta replace, there's two lines that run from right back here to right here, they're right on top of each other, and they need to be replaced to fix that GR stumble. This is your fuel pressure regulator, this is your fuel in, and then the bottom one is your fuel out. So, or return, I guess it's not out. So, we undid our fuse. It's the last fuse right here. That's your fuel pump. Pull it out, turn the key over, runs for two seconds. Get some of the fuel out, not all of it. So definitely make sure to put some rags underneath here because you will get fuel coming out of these hoses. They still have fuel in them. You're not gonna be able to get all the fuel out. The easy DIY way to do this is to grab a zip tie, preferably a thicker one, and cut it in half, right in the middle, cut it in half, and then use these two ends to poke into the fuel lines. Now there's two notches on this green ring, and you can spin this green ring around. It'll spin around for you, and you want it vertical. So you want this these notches to be facing up and down. That means that you've got a tab on each side. What you do is you just push this in, and you'll feel it kind of push into the, uh, uh, there's a little flap that needs to be pushed out. Put it on both sides. Push the hose in while you're pushing the zip ties out, and it will click, and then you just kind of wiggle it out. Make sure you have rags available. And there you go. So that's the inside of a fuel hose, and those are the tabs that you're trying to move um, out. So you're pushing those out so it can go around this little ridge right here. Do that for all four of these. There's gonna be fuel in them, so be very careful. And uh, we'll move on from there. These back ones are a little bit different story. They're a little harder to deal with, especially this bottom one. There's a lot of stuff in the way, so take your time with it and don't ruin them. They are plastic on plastic, so these little edges could harm the plastic inside, but just be very careful. Take your time with it. Make sure that you are got it in the right position. Make sure that those notches are still facing up on these ones. Looks like I'm gonna have to take this top one off first before I can get to that bottom um, fuel line. setup 
and it's a lot bigger than this box. So I'm really curious as to what this new setup, how much smaller it is in comparison. So let's open it up. Joe, shout out to Joe. Couple stickers. That's what's in the box. So what goes to what? First things first, install the short runner onto the fuel pressure regulator that already has this hose connected. Now the fuel pressure regulator is going to sit upside down and the short run actually sits at the firewall on the bottom on that white connector. So it connects down there. The fuel pressure regulator sits on this bracket right here, right here, and it has a provided spacer that goes with this nut and bolt, and this goes on, the spacer goes on, and then it connects to this bracket. So we'll install that. The long runner, again, goes towards the intake. The short runner goes towards the firewall. This sits upside down, and then we'll connect the, the actual vacuum, not to where it's supposed to be, but that actually gets capped off. That's where the previous runner was. That's the only for this four-cylinder. We're actually going to connect to our uh, blow-pass valve, so this will give us a more consistent reading across all the cylinders, not just one cylinder. There we go, we've got the bottom one installed, short side towards the firewall, long side towards the intake, and then the nuts tighten down. This is a half inch nut. And now we'll go ahead and move on to teeing actually into this. So we'll cut a section, I'll probably cut it down in here so it's not so noticeable. So we're teeing off into this one to go to this side of the fuel pressure regulator. And all I did was I took it off this side and I pulled it off of the barb down below. It's gonna be kind of a pain to get back in, but that's the hose that I'm going for. I'm probably gonna tee it right in here, so that way it's hiding underneath everything, and it doesn't look too abstract. Now I'm gonna use this hose that they provided with me to install onto here. So I'm using the factory one, and. I'm not going to use this section of hose. I'm not going to use this section of hose that they provided. I'll still use the factory one. So here we've got the provided T, and I think I'm going to put it in right in here. Somewhere in there like that. That way it's kind of easy to get to still. So we'll give this a cut. Stick this side in here. that side on. It looked a little something like that. We'll put this back on here. Right there. And then this hose goes on this side. And we'll put their logo down. Now they provided a bunch of zip ties, so might as well use them. There we go. We've got our new hose connected, teed, ready to hook this up. Since this line's gonna be running kind of close to some things and right underneath the intercooler and hot areas. So um, I went and found some sheathing and I'm just running some sheathing right around it. And we'll tuck it in and then cut it to length. And then it will hopefully help with uh, any heat that gets to, it, to the hose. Now we've got this side installed. I'm gonna throw a zip tie. Got one right here on that real quick and then run this sheathing back over it to make it look nice and factory. There's one right here, there's one kind of tucked down in there. But you can kind of see it runs underneath and comes around, you can kind of see it right there. Comes around that way, comes up this way, tucks in underneath that and goes right into the blow off valve. You blow past valve, that's not a blow off valve. So 
it looks completely stock like that. And I like the way that it's tucked in there nice and tight. Everything's still nice and tidy. So that'll, that'll work really good for me. Throw a zip tie on that. And that will be pretty much it. We'll throw this top one on. This reference will go back on. And we'll be good to go. Got that side all buttoned up. Now we'll put this back on. Now it's time to install the top fuel feed and the part that has a protective sheathing on it goes towards the intake runner and the part that doesn't goes towards the firewall. Now if you're having problems with these connectors where they're at, you can take them and kind of twist them and you can get them to where you want them to be. I want mine to be both facing the same way so it looks the same. And you push it on, and you'll kind of feel it stop and click. Push that down, give it a tug to make sure that it's on there, and repeat for the other side. Almost forgot the most important part, blocking off where that old piece went. And that is right down in here. You can kind of see there's a little nipple that the old fuel pressure went to. This just gets a new cap. And for safe measures, I'll throw a quick little zip tie on it. That's how you s install the Cobb GR Stumble fuel pressure regulator kit, whatever you want to call it, um, to hopefully fix that stumble. Now that it's installed, we'll reinstall that fuse for the fuel pump and cycle the key on four to five times for about three seconds. So we'll turn it for three seconds and turn it off four or five times. That'll be enough to get fuel back up to the engine, and then you can start it back up again. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.